Greetings, this is Panu from VLSI. Now I'm going to show you how to update the VSOS kernel in your VS1005 G developer board. Now to update the kernel we need to get the latest version of VSIDE, the latest beta version from the VSDSP forum. VSDSP forum. And the kernel can be found from VS1005 and VSOS software. Latest kernel, now number 3.07, uh, available here. And we need to scroll. There's a lot of different versions here. But we need to find the last message here, which says the latest ver kernel version 3.07, available here. And here we can download the VSIDE package, which contains the template from which we can compile the VSOS kernel. Now let's allow the file to download. OK. And now we can run the installer. Now it suggests this folder. Uh, which basically is okay, but it has some problematic spaces and some special characters which are difficult for some helper tools that I like to use. So I prefer to install VSID to this folder. Now it's installing. We'll wait for it to finish. And now we can launch the VSIDE. Okay, here you see the VSIDE main screen. Now, to find the kernel, we need to instantiate a new solution. File, new, solution. And it's a VS1005 solution. Let's give it a name VSOS307. Okay. Select the version that you like, 3.07, or internal or external flash. OK. It shows you the readme text, some update history, information how to install this and that. You might want to read it. But now we can just build it by selecting build, build solution. And if everything goes OK, then it shows some information about the size of the kernel it has created. Now the responsible thing to do would be to study all this and see what kind of kernel we have built. But on the other hand, we can just try to run it. To run it, we need to click on the yellow Run button. Now. The first time this is pressed, it cannot connect because the serial port settings are wrong. Now I have connected my developer board with the UART cable to the PC and reset it, so it should auto detect. And it does. If it doesn't, try resetting your board, close VSIDE, restart it, and check that there is no other program running that could occupy the serial port. But now we have connection, so we can click close and try to run it again. Nothing very interesting seems to happen, but if I take a look at the developer board, I can see that the LCD screen has come up. There is nothing on the LCD screen, so you might think that there is something wrong, but there isn't. Let's switch to the standard input-output window. And here you can see that something has happened. The VSOS 3.07 has booted. It has started the kernel. It has started devices. It has found external SPI flash. And it's installed a system device S, which we call system disk is the SPI flash, but then there is an error. The device is not open. 
zero drivers loaded. It has tried to load some drivers, but it hasn't been able to run to load any drivers. Okay, it continues, shows that there are some tasks running, there are some interrupts running, the duck interrupt is running, the UART receive interrupt is running, and timer 2 interrupts are running. Now, it has tried to load init.ap3 program from the disk S, but there is a problem, the device is not open. So it doesn't find sinit.ap3 and there is nothing for it to do. To give the operating system something to do, we need to write stuff to the flash, starting with the kernel. So now we stop debugging, yes, and go to project, promer flash or utility, external SPI flash promer. Now this kernel can be used with internal or external flash. By default it uses the external flash, external flash, so we use the external SPI flash proper. Next, next, start. And now we can see that it is writing the kernel to the flash, SPI flash on the developer board. Okay, let's close this window and minimize the VSIDE for a minute. Right, uh, let's find an install or helper program. Uh, I like this program, Termite, from CompuPhase. Um, it's a serial port monitor which is really, really nice. Let's where to down download download download. Okay, save file. Okay, run. Next, next, install. Finish. That's great. And uh, I need to. Did I? Yeah, I stopped this one here. Then let's try to connect with Termite. And uh, select COM3, the, which we discovered from the auto detect earlier. 8, 1, no parity, no flow control. I'm not sure about this, but let's try this. Okay and make it a little bit bigger and reset the once uh, the developer board once more that's great the next thing i do is i press s1 and keep s1 pressed on the developer board and then reset and what happens here is it says USB publishing disk SPI flash, 1.9 megabytes, and there's a notification from Windows. You need to format the disk before you can use it, and this is exactly what we want. So, let's format it to FAT with these parameters. 1.87 megabytes is 2 megabytes minus 128k for the kernel. Start. OK, ding, 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 format complete. And then we can discover it here, removable disk, 1.84 megabytes. Now, let's do something. Let's do a test first. I will make new text document and write config.txt and I will write something here, it doesn't really matter what let's write here something like testing okay save uh -huh. testing, right 
and then let's safely remove and eject VS1005. Okay, great. And now let's reset the developer board once more. And it says hello again, and here you can see the difference. It has tried to load driver called testing, because we wrote that to the config.txt. Let's see the flash contents once more. I reset with S1 pressed and the removable disk comes up again and I can see here the config.txt. Uh, huh. And in the terminal, ah, oh, it doesn't do that. We can see that the output from the developer board corresponds with this line testing. Testing, open filed, error, testing, error, no lib file, not loaded. There's more than one way to tell you that it hasn't been able to load a device driver called testing. Okay, this is just to show that it recognizes the SPI flash, it can read from the SPI flash, it tries to open the config.txt which is successful and then it tries to load the drivers that are written in the config.txt, the instructions to load those drivers. Great. Okay, let's put something else there. Uh, reset once again with the S1 pressed, removable disk F, open, and let's find something to put there. Let's go back to VSDSP forum and go back to the thread about the kernel and here in the end we can find a collection of very old drivers which I'm sure in a couple of days probably with a few tutorials we'll be able to make some some more better drivers here but from this zip file here from the forum, from from this drivers collection, we can find a better config.txt. Let's copy that to the flash and copy init.ap3, the main menu. And then let's just copy these drivers to the flash. You might know that an SPI flash is rather slow. <laughs> In fact, it's, it's slower than a floppy disk. So it takes a while to, to write to the SPI flash. But nothing to worry about. We can take a look into the sys folder we can see some drivers which will become very familiar to us in the next few days and then there is a configuration it tries to load lcd driver lcd control driver for touch buttons driver for standard buttons and that's it so basically from the config.txt it tries to find which drivers to load and then it loads the drivers and finally tries to run init.ap3 from the flash. And let's go back to the terminal. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Safely remove, eject, great. Now it's safe to remove, so that means safe to reset. I click the reset on the developer board once more. And we can see that we have loaded successfully drivers for LCD, LCD, um, LCD console, touch 288, 
this open failed actually doesn't mean that the touch driver has failed to open. It tries to load calibration data for the touch screen and that file it cannot read. So that is failed. So don't worry about it. It will go away when you configure the touch screen and it loads a driver for the standard buttons. Four drivers in total. Then it loads the init.ap3 and when I watch see the LCD screen I can see that the LCD screen has come up and the main menu is running on the board. Great.